I think we're just about ready to start. Um, the entrance hymn this morning is uh, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, which is found in the Catholic Book of Worship at five, number 536. <coughs> Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of God's Holy Spirit be with you always. 
Today is the day the Lord has made on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We rejoice and we are glad. And it's our chance every week to just hit the pause button on life, to turn ourselves and our minds inwardly, to see where God has called us, healed us, and encouraged us to do better. And so mindful of that great gift of his mercy, let us turn once more to his heart of forgiveness, trusting it is there that we will always find our peace. Lord Jesus, you touch our ears to hear your word. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you touch our lips to allow us to share and to pass on our experiences of faith. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you touch our hearts to allow us to love as you have taught us to love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us in our sin and raise us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish within us this Easter mystery that those you were pleased to make new through holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joy of eternal life. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We are seated as we listen to God's word. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the disciples, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus Saul had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So Saul went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought Saul down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Lord, 
from you comes my praise in the great congregation. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pray before those who fear him. The poor shall at night and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great consolation. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all of the families of nations shall worship before Him. To Him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before Him shall bow all who go down to the dust. Lord, from you comes my grace in the great congregation. I shall live for Him, posterity will serve Him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying, He has done it. Lord, when you come to my grace in the great a reading from the first letter of St. John. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever obeys his commandments abides in him and abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Abide in me as I abide in you, says the Lord. My branches bear much fruit. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me, that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, 
as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Full confession, little update on my eyes. I finally got, after almost a year after surgery, I finally got new glasses. But they're a great departure, huge departure. And we had to kind of buy the middle of the road here. So I don't really have a prescription I can really use, but it's better than nothing. We're going to be experimenting. But the problem with this is I can only see straight out. <laughs> so... <laughs> I have four feet, I have four hands, <laughs> and I'm dizzy a lot. And somebody said, that must be hard. I said, well, it's just like what I was drinking, except this doesn't cost me anything. <laughs> so I'm trying to see the good in it all. But forgive me because, you know, I take things personally, and I'm making mistakes reading. And, you know, it's pride, eh? We have a hard time asking for help. And I'm not recognizing people. It's, I hugged a lady in the co-op I thought was Doris Clark, and it wasn't. And, oh, geez, you know, so coming to an inquiry near you, for sure. So just, uh, I just ask your indulgence, because I'm confused, and I don't know where this is all going to look, and I'm having a hard time with stairs and reading especially. So just your patience and prayer. Uh, I know you don't judge, and if you do, you just tell it to people at Chicken Chef anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> so, just, I don't need to hear your negativity. <laughs> so, with all that in mind, we're here on the fifth Sunday of Easter, right? And we got this beautiful gospel from St. John. And, you know, we can read it like we always do, and you can hear that beautiful image, eh, where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You know, that sounds so nice. It sounds so poetic. It's a beautiful little image, you know, especially for a people who can relate to that, which is what the early audience of, of Jesus, they could. You know, vine growing was a big thing. Wineries were huge. This was, a, this was a, a big discipline for them. So that's an image that held something for them that they could really easily connect with on a much deeper level than perhaps maybe you and I. So I'm going to try to flesh that image out for you because I think it leaves us something to chew on in regards to how it is we live our lives in relation to God and in relation to each other. Jesus was a wise man. God, a wise guy. Now, this story is only found in John's Gospel. You don't hear this Gospel episode in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. It's only here in the form that we see it. And to give it a bit of depth, I'm going to give you the context behind it. This gospel appears right after the Last Supper, but before the agony in the garden. Okay, so this is just before his passion, the very, very beginning of his passion. They've left supper, they've left the Passover meal, and they're on their way to pray in the garden of Gethsemane. Now these guys know that this Passover that they just celebrated with Jesus was a little different than the ones they've done their whole lives. There was different symbolism here. Jesus was talking about his body and his blood. He was talking about the washing of the feet, service and charity. He was talking about forgiveness. And he was talking about, he was talking about his death. Which was unsettling, right? Very unsettling. 
And now they're going to the garden, and Jesus drops this. This nugget, this beautiful little image, this parable to them. You have to ask yourself, why? Well, you and I, just like Jesus and the disciples, we don't deal well with adversity. When somebody rips the carpet out from underneath us, ah, it's never a comfortable feeling. You know, and to, I'm going to go to the most obvious one. The most obvious one. When we lose someone we love to death. You know, nothing looks the same in the world in that moment. Nothing at all. You know, we can look out the window. People are going about their days. You see cars drive by. People are at the co-op. They're shopping. And we want to scream out, Don't you know what's happened? I've lost the love of my life. And nothing seems... Nothing's never going to be normal again. And there's a fear, there's a, there's a grieving, there's a loss, there's a sorrow there. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's not comparable to any other loss that you experience in life. It's on a whole other page. Jesus understood that and he knew that he himself was about to face the choice. A huge choice. And he knew that that choice was going to have consequences, not only for himself, but for the, the men and women that are traveling with him now that love him and that he loved as well. And so he says, he says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me as I abide in you. He uses that word directly, purposefully, abide. When we abide with someone, hey, words aren't necessary, Right? I'm not talking about the unhealthy lack of words where you just can't stand each other and give each other the silent treatment. I'm talking about a real sense of peace where you're, you're in the presence of somebody you care for that you love and words aren't necessary. You don't need to fill every void with a syllable, with a noise, with a sound. That sense of abiding also has a sense of what? A sense of security. A sense of something that's solid. A sense of something that's foundational, that, that can't just easily be destroyed. There's a comfort and there's a consolation in it. So Jesus uses those words specifically, abide in me as I abide in you. In other words, in other words, trust me and trust that even though there's going to be some pruning, even though there's going to be loss, even though there's going to be some distancing and and there's going, to be, there's going to be hurt. It doesn't cut me off from you forever. Far from it. You'll never be separated from my love or my Father's love. Now, admittedly, I'm a virgin when it comes to gardening. So, I just started this the last year or so, eh? And I'm, I never thought I could get excited about green things, truth be told. There's truth that there's conversion in everyone. So, I got to tell you how excited I get when stuff starts growing out of the ground. You know, like it's, it boggles me. After the winters we have and everything, stuff still grows, even in the soil. It comes up. Now, the problem for me is, I don't know what's good or bad. <laughs> so, I pick myself up something you all should have. I pick myself up a Bernie Boots. Okay, Bernie Boots, she's wonderful, you know. Because when I'm tempted to pull something that I probably shouldn't, she says, no, no, leave that alone. Leave that alone. No, no, that's going to be something else. You just hold on there. You know? Now, that's a patient woman. That's a patient woman. Why? Because she's patient to watch things grow. She lets things take their time. Not rushing it. And the same with her education of me. She doesn't hit me on the head with a shovel and say, you idiot, that's a carrot. It's not a weed. She lets me grow. She lets me grow in my understanding. But she's not afraid to prune me once or twice. <laughs> when I need it. And that's how God works. We're going to go through life not knowing sometimes what's always the best. Or it's always the right choice. We're not always going to know that. But God doesn't cut us off at the roots. No. 
He teaches us and shows us. And how's the best way of showing us how to live? By letting us fall and make mistakes. Those are the lessons we remember. Those are the hard ones. You know? Whenever I got a licking from my mom or from my dad, I remembered those lessons. <laughs> I didn't need a repeat. Those are the ones we remember. The hard ones. Now what else does that image teach us? It teaches us something else. What does Jesus say? Apart from me, you can do nothing. There's a wisdom in that, right? Because I want to chart my own course. Especially when I'm not well. Especially when I'm, I'm not at my best. You know, I'm, and living alone, it, it creeps into you, you know. After a while, you just get used to solving things alone. So it gets hard to ask for help. And so we do that. We push people away. We isolate. We, we keep people at the margins of our hurt and of our suffering, of our, of our doubt, of our questioning. And sometimes we only come when it's almost too late. So Jesus reminds us of something else in the gospel today, and that's, don't shut me out. You're going to try. You're going to try and grow on your own. You are. You're going to try to cut yourself off, and you're going to try to replant yourself somewhere that you think is better. And you're going to run into problems when that happens. And that's okay, because, you know, you wanted to try it. But there's an easier way. There's always an easier way. And that easy way is, is reaching back, looking back to where you came from, to the values that your parents gave you and taught you. Looking back to, to what's worked most of the time for other people. Looking back at the vine, at the root of, of our faith, and the values that our faith offered and shaped the world with. It didn't shape a church. Christ shaped the world. He taught the world. And those values are still living and growing. It's proof. It works. So Jesus says, resist. Always wanting to do it alone. There are easier ways. And let's share that growth together. And that means looking at uniting all my life back to God. Back to the vine from which it flows. That I just don't have a work life. I just don't have a play life. I just don't have a family life. I have a whole life that was a gift from God filled with people that remind me that I'm loved and also remind me of where I need to grow and how I need to grow. And so I, 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 I make an effort to keep it all together instead of separating it and parsing it out as I feel is best. God wants all of us in the garden. That, there's, that was never, there was never an option to leave something out. He always wants more. So perhaps this weekend I give you this prayer. When you wake up, try thanking, try thanking, try thanking God for your life. Thank you God for this life today. Just a quick sentence. Don't have to elaborate. And then at the end of the day, Thank him for what you lived. Thank him for your work. Thank you for blessing you with work. Thank him for blessing you with love. Thank him for blessing you with forgiveness and understanding. Again, it doesn't need to be multiple sentences. Just one thought. Thank you. And that helps me in the morning and at night to remember that no whatever happens between those two points, that all of it is connected to God. And not just to me. In my heart. My mind. 
and my will. But all of it, all of us, we belong to God. Let the Lord feed us at God's always will. In response to God's word, let us confess once more who it is we are and what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Each time we gather for prayer, we gather not only for our needs, but for the needs of the world entrusted to our care. With confidence we offer to our Father, our prayer of petition today. For the church, striving to share the good news of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who make decisions that affect the lives of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who remain entombed in the darkness and for all who seek to liberate them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Easter hope in our Eucharist community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, you know our needs far better than we ourselves. Hear the prayers we offer before you, and answer them according to your holy will. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are now seated as we prepare our offering. The offertory hymn is Ye Sons and Daughters, which is in the Catholic Book of Worship, at number 506, ye sons and daughters. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Ye sons and daughters, let us sing the key sing, from death to life goes triumphing, Alleluia, 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 that Easter morning at break of day, the faithful men Way to see the truth where Jesus lay. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, our loving and very generous Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Loving God, who by this wonderful exchange of gifts have allowed us to share in your glory, grant that we, as, as we have come to know your truth, we may make it our own by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all else to praise you gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising we are given eternal life. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we too proclaim your glory as we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Send forth your Spirit to sanctify these gifts, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving you thanks, handed it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. We stand as we proclaim the mystery of faith. <clears throat> proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in the sharing of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Murray, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, Saint Anne, Saint Oscar Romero, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to share in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Gathering our prayer and praise into one voice, we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, and you say now to us, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Share that peace generously with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. It's an opportunity for those of you at home now to pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Pray you invite the Lord into your heart to grant you every grace your life requires. Communion hymn is Christians Let Us Love One Another, which is at um, number 572 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Christians Let Us Love One Another. Christians, let us love one another. All with trouble, true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood we are fed. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our God. God is love. Who break this bread are one body. We who cherish God are one body. Strong of our God, living woman. We are brothers of God's own son. Everyone who loves is God. Jesus is our life, God is love. We who eat and drink of that day, oh, and when God again with our love. King water for a man who thirsts for reward. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life, God is Let us stand and conclude our prayer. Almighty Lord, graciously be present to your people and lead those you have blessed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May God gently bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go live today for the glory of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Recessional hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today, which is in the Catholic Book of Worship at number 500. Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Ah, ah, ah.